Our topic for today is how to represent an organic compound. Well, bago tayo mag-aral kung paano mag-name ng organic compounds, syempre kailangan maintindihan muna natin how organic compounds are represented. So, there are different ways in representing an organic compound. So, on this video, iisa-isahin natin sila. Starting with the chemical formulas. So, Organic compounds can be presented in a form of chemical formula. So, itong mga nakikita natin dito, ito yung mga examples ng uh, chemical formula. So, ano ba itong chemical formulas? It expressed the proportions of atoms using element symbols and subscript. So, nakikita natin dito yung symbols ng element at yung subscript naman pinapakita kung gaano karami or yung proportion ng ating element dito sa organic compounds natin. Now, why chemical formulas are useful? It is useful because it is the simplest way to represent a compound. Okay, so just simply by writing these formulas, marirepresent na natin kaagad yung ating organic compound. But the downside of this is that it does not give any detail about the structure or shape of the compound. And when we study organic chemistry, maintindihan natin that structures and shapes are ideal and necessary in organic chemistry. So, it is important because if you have different structure or shape, uh, you may have a whole different type of compound or a whole different type of things. So, for example, itong nakikita natin chemical formula dito, it can have a different structure or shape, so it may be a whole different type of organic compound. So, mahalaga talaga uh, na makita natin kung ano yung structure and shape ng ating organic compound. So, ang sunod na type ng way of representing the organic compound is yung tinatawag natin condensed structural formula. Ito yung example naman ng condensed structural formula. It expresses the general structure of a compound and it includes subscript. So, nakikita natin yung mga elements natin dito is meron ding subscript. So, nakikita natin dito yung structure niya or yung shape and our elements have subscript. So, dito, ma-identify natin yung both the shape of our organic compound and the formula very easily. No? So, for example, dito meron tayong organic compound dito, no? So, may kita natin dito na ang elements na present dito are carbon and hydrogen. So, madali nating makukuha dito yung ating chemical formula. First, let us count how many carbons do we have. So, we have element carbon here and then check natin kung ilang carbon meron tayo. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, meron tayong 9 carbons. So, ngayon naman, let us count how many hydrogen atoms we have here. But first, I'm seeing a mistake here because our carbon should have 4 bonds. Sana ikita natin dito, no? But this one only have 3. So, there should have hydrogen in here, no? So, now let us count kung ilang hydrogen meron tayo dito. So, we have 3, 4, 6, 7, 10, 12, 13, 16, 18. Okay? So, we have 18 hydrogen here. So, nakita ninyo, no? Mabilis natin nakuha yung chemical formula natin dito. Now, let me give you another example of a condensed structural formula. Okay? So, this is also an example of a condensed structural formula. And once we learn how to name our organic compounds, this is actually called propane. Okay, so pag-aaralan natin yan in another video. No? Now, another way of representing the organic compounds is what we call structural formula. So, we're probably seeing this already in some organic chemistry books, no? Now, structural formula express the entire structure and shape of the molecule including the placement of every atom. So, ito, very detailed na makikita natin dito. No? So, it's very useful because it gives you the most detail of any type of formula. So, let me fix this one. It should be give. Okay? 
So, it gives you the most detail of any type of formula. So, dito nakikita natin yung structure niya, yung shape niya, and at the same time, nakikita natin kung saan nakalagay talaga ang ating hydrogen, ang ating iba't ibang elements, no? Because dito, uh, meron tayong subscript ng hydrogen, but we really don't know how it looks. Okay? So, hindi natin niya nakikita dito sa ating condensed structural formulas. But in here sa ating structural formulas, may kita natin in detail kung saan exactly nakalagay ang ating mga hydrogen atoms. No? So wala tayong subscripts dito. So bawat atoms or bawat elements natin clearly nakalagay kung saan ang kanilang location or position sa ating formula. No? Now, why this is not useful? Because this amount of details is not always required. It takes too long to draw out each hydrogen. So, yun ang downside nito. Lalo na kung mahaba ang ating carbon chain. So, napakaraming susulatan natin kung nasaan ba yung ating hydrogen or iba't ibang element. So, yun ang downside ng structural formula. Now, another way is to use line structure. Katulad ng nakikita natin dito. So, it express the shape of the molecule using only lines. Now, why this is useful? It is the easiest way to convey the shape of a molecule. And why it is not useful? Because it gives the least amount of detail. So, obviously, ito yung pinakamadaling isulat, no? But, but it gives us the least detail. So, kailangan mo siyang i-analyze para mabuo mo yung structure ng ating organic compound. So, how do you read this? So, let us have a look at this structure right here. So, yung mga nakikita natin dito na corners and ends ng ating lines, it represent our carbon atoms, no? So, bibilangin natin kung ilan ang ating uh, corners at ang ating end ng lines that represents our carbon atoms. So, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, on this one, we have a total of 6 carbon. And then, alam natin na ang ating carbon has 4 bonds. So, we will have here 3 hydrogen. Uh, we have here 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen, and 3 hydrogen. So, we have how many hydrogens here? So, we have 3 plus 2 will be 5 plus 2 will be 7 plus 2 will be 9 plus 2 will be 11, and plus 3 will be 14. Okay? So, this is our chemical formula for this structure. So, let's say yung previous example natin dito, which is propane. So, isulat natin siya in terms of line structure. So, yung propane natin is having 3 carbon. No? So, nakikita natin dito, 1, 2, 3. At ang kanyang hydrogen is... Uh, 3 plus 2 will be 5 plus 3 will be 8. Okay? So, our propane is equal to C3H8. Ba? So, how are we going to represent it using line structure? So, you have 3 carbon, so it be 1, 2, 3. Okay? So, this is it. Ito actually ang ating propane. So, as you can see, it is very easy to represent using line structure. So, let us check how many carbon we have. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we have C3. And we know that our carbon has 4 bonds. So, we have here 3, we have 2, and we have 3. So, we have 3 plus 2 will be 5 plus 3 will be 8. So, we have C3H8 in here. Okay? So, mas madaling i-represent yung ating organic compound using line structure but you need to analyze ang ating structure para makuha mo ang kanyang chemical formula. So, to sum it up, we have here okay, an example of our molecular formula, structural formula, condensed structural formula, and the bond or line structure ng ating organic compound. Okay? So, here are some examples na pwede ninyong pag-aralan. Okay, so on our next video, sisimulan natin pag-aralan kung paano ba ang ayupak 
nomenclature in naming organic compounds.